Hey Legends, welcome back to the I'm about to voice some unpopular opinions and I'm rapidly stocking up on Flame Retardant Suits Corner. From all the GT car simulators currently out there, two stand clearly out from the crowd. ACC has become the first fully licensed game to take on this aspect of motorsport, getting direct manufacturer data regarding not only cars, but also tyre compounds and construction. In true Kunoz fashion, They've also taken to laser scanning all the track surfaces to provide a super realistic GT car race simulator. With all that in their favour, you might think, well, it ends there, doesn't it? The Seto Corsa Competizione is the best GT simulator on the market. Well, hold your horses, because in spite of all this, R Factor Pro is still used to train actual GT drivers, and we're going to look at just why that is with this direct comparison between ACC and R Factor 2. In order to keep things as fair as possible, we're using laser scan versions of both the Nürburgring GP and Spa Francorchamps circuits, with Porsche GT3s and McLaren 720Ss respectively. It should be said that I was a very early access adopter of ACC and have experienced it at every point of its development cycle since the original Huracan was released with the Nürburgring GP. It had a very troubled beginning, with it taking a very long time for force feedback to become useful for many of us. Unfortunately for me, it never really met the mark. I had long suspected that it was my T500 RS simply being too damped and too strong to adequately feel details through, but the moment I tried R Factor 2 for the first time, I immediately knew this wasn't the case. Before doing this review, I upgraded to a Fnatic DD1 to assure my comments about the force feedback are coming from as balanced a place as possible. I was astonished at how much tweaking it took to get half decent force feedback from ACC. Whereas in RF2, I simply adjusted the strength multiplier per car and it was ready to go. For both games, I used Fnatic's official recommended settings as a base. I unfortunately had to deviate for ACC quite a bit in order to approximate the road detail I was getting from RF2. The behaviour of ACC's force feedback settings leads me to believe that there could still be a few bugs lurking beneath the surface which need addressing. Namely, that I had to reduce force feedback frequency to 222Hz in order to get any finer details coming through from the excessively strong damping forces. With that said, let's move on to the comparison. We're kicking things off on RF2 in the Porsche 911 GT3 on the Nürburgring GP circuit. The first thing we can say about this game is that in spite of the Nürburgring track being very recent, this game looks quite dated. It's based on an old engine and that much is obvious the moment you look at it. The sounds are passable, but nothing special. Where it makes up for, however, is in the driving feel and response. The most immediate impression is that you can feel wherever the car is on the limit. If you lose it, it's entirely your own fault because the game communicates all the cues through the wheel in order for you to catch the slides. Interestingly, it's very good at communicating that this Porsche is a rear engine chassis with a readily apparent lift off oversteer and throttle on understeer. As such, you immediately have to adjust your driving style to use coasting to swing the car around corners and apply the throttle later than you normally would after the apex. What your lap time loses in the linearity of your inputs, you gain through sheer mid-corner turn-in and immediate power application to the rear wheels on corner exit. If you watch the car externally, you can appreciate how realistically RF2 renders weight transfer and tyre behaviour over curbs. There is a real sense of friction and contact between the tyre patch and road surface, putting it ahead of the standard simulators that feel like the car is magically floating over the tarmac. Much of this has to do with its insanely CPU intensive tyre model, which on current hardware is only capable of running on the player car and not the AI, and the dozens of contact patch points they model per tyre, all dynamically shifting as the tyre deforms over a given surface at a given pressure. This is as opposed to ACC's five modelled contact points, which at launch only consisted of a single contact point directly underneath the tyre. Moving on to the same track and car combo on ACC, the first impression you get is that this game looks and sounds a generation apart. If you were going solely off footage, ACC would be a hands down winner. The detail and nuances in both audio and visuals are vastly beyond R Factor 2. That said, comparatively, the first impression you get is a sense of vagueness to the controls, in particular the wheel during loss of traction. The self-aligning torque, damping and overall detail level all feel a little off. It's hard to know what the car is doing and when it's going to do it. 
Generally, I found my laps in ACC less consistent and in regards to driving feel, less pleasurable overall. One of my general litmus tests for how good a simulator's physics engine is, is whether you can see what forces are acting upon a car from a still shot. Based on how it's banking mid-corner, you should be able to tell which direction it's turning in, whether it's in a compression or whether it's accelerating or braking hard, depending on the pitch and roll acting on it. ACC is not good at rendering those forces visually, as the car looks somewhat glued to the tarmac no matter what it's doing. R Factor 2, Automobilista 2 and Beam and G on the other hand are tremendously good at visually representing these forces. Moving on from the gripes, this game also does a good job in communicating the rear engine nature of the chassis, with the steering lightning and the rear end clearly wanting to step out every time you lift off the throttle mid-corner. The problem with the force feedback vagueness, however, presents itself in knowing when and how much to counter-steer in such situations. Looking at the car from the outside, this game is gorgeous. I find myself wanting to view replays for the sheer joy of watching the car move around the track. This is a joy I don't find shared in RF2. In RF2, I simply prefer to race and feel the car, at which point my gripes about the graphics and sounds tend to fade away very quickly. One of the extra advantages to ACC is that the LCDs are rendered accurately, scrolling through menus with the readouts reflecting what's actually going on with the car in great detail. It's a little touch, but it goes a long way in adding to the immersion. Moving on to R Factor 2 on Spa in the McLaren 720S. This is one of my favourite track and car combos in GT racing, shy of the Nordschleife. This version of the track is ripped from the original Assetto Corsa and feels very similar to it, albeit with very generous track limits. The curbs are very gracious and soft, which leads me to believe that this model may be a little bit flattering to lap times and driving feel as a whole. Conversely, in ACC the curbs tend to be much rougher and will often attempt to pull you off the track. The immediate point of difference here is that I'm consistently at least 3 seconds per lap faster in RF2, in both cases doing my best to quickly tune the car to the track. I have more confidence in the car in RF2 because it communicates the limit much more viscerally. It's much easier to slip the rear tyres but then pull the car back in line, whereas in ACC I'm so often pulled into lumbering, uncontrollable slides. Again, visually ACC smokes RF2 like no tomorrow. Here you can see ACC has modelled the actual fibres of the dash material on the 720S. It looks stellar. If we were watching broadcasts of the games, I know which I'd rather see. There's more to games than just raw physics and feeling however, and we'll take a moment to explore those. In regards to menu structure, intuitiveness and overall aesthetic appeal, ACC is the clear winner. RF2 has an ancient menu that wasn't good even in its day. The developers are working on a new UI at present, which is currently in beta, the development of which appears to be taking an inordinate amount of time. The AI is often praised in R Factor 2, though for my part I simply cannot understand why. Rare is the race where they don't turn the first corner into a complete scrum, allow overtakes without running the player off the track, or quite simply just crash into the player uncaringly. The ACC AI, meanwhile, are engaging to race. They cede to overtakes where appropriate and attempt aggressive passes within reason. They're also on the same physics model as the player, and as such, racing them is far more compelling than RF2, where the AI are on a simplified physics model which allows them to do things the player simply cannot. We've already covered this in our comparison, but audio-visually there is no contest. ACC wins this hands down. Running on Unreal Engine 4, its graphics are truly next-gen, whereas R Factor 2 is stuck firmly in last decade. In their recent roadmap, they were considering adding a feature as elementary and commonplace as SSAO. It's unlikely R Factor 2 will ever stand up in this area, and we would likely need to wait for a sequel built on a whole new engine for this to be possible. Regarding multiplayer, you would be lucky to find a single RF2 lobby that isn't a league-organized race. The online ecosystem virtually doesn't exist. ACC, meanwhile, has a growing fan base and driver rating system. The televised esports events which take place in RF2 are wonderful to watch and often feature some of the best in the world, but that's little consolation to those of us just looking to blow off some steam on a public server. 
Regarding the physics, even after ACC's much louded 5-point tire model update, which did overhaul the handling substantially, it still lags behind the driving feel and response of R-Factor 2. The force feedback is still iffy to say the least, and after having spent weeks attempting to dial in workable force feedback in both Assetto Corsa and Assetto Corsa Competizione over the years, I can comfortably say that it simply just isn't there compared to games like R-Factor 2 or Automobilista 2, where you simply set the gain slider and you're ready to go. Part of me is inclined to believe that this is because of some fundamentally incomplete physics model because physics and force feedback interwine almost inextricably in racing sims, and almost always the most realistic and complete physics models send the most realistic and complete forces down the virtual column. We have yet to see another sim match the marvel that is our Factor 2's tyre model. Summing up, when we put all of the game criteria alongside each other, ACC is a clear winner in almost every respect, yet if you were to tell me I have two hours to kill and a great sim rig in front of me, which of the two would I hot lap in for two hours straight without complaint? That's R Factor 2, without a doubt. In spite of the clunky menu, the potato graphics, the homicidal AI, the many long-standing issues the developers refuse to address, it still provides the driving experience like no other, and in my opinion, this is why R Factor's engine is still the go-to for GT teams looking to train their drivers virtually. Hope you enjoyed that comparison. Did I miss any points? Be sure to tell me down below, and while you're at it, smash subscribe in order to stay up to date with all the latest news in the Simosphere. If you didn't like it, just go ahead and smash dislike twice to show me who's boss, and until next time, have a good one.